<sighs> okay, just got done with my first and only lesson of the day, and happy, happy June 9th, also known as 6-9, nice, and it is week three of the State League 4-5 18 and over journey that you guys have been following along with, so thank you for coming along with the ride, and right now I am in Fox Point, Wisconsin, and we have to take a trip to our home courts at Brookfield East. Last week we had a bye, and the week before our team won 5-0 with me dropping the only set out of my entire team. So hopefully after this tennis match we will be 10-0 and, and well far beyond first place for the greater Milwaukee area to be able to qualify for state. Sectionals, then nationals. We'll see how this goes. Take the next right onto East Cherokee Circle. I don't understand how people navigated somewhat unfamiliar eras, areas before GPS navigation or smartphones left onto North Mohawk Road. became a thing. I just can't memorize directions. I don't even know where North is unless I have an electronic device. I'm just not very gifted at all with knowing what cardinal direction is which. But right now it is about 85 degrees. No wind, not that humid. Turn left onto North Mohawk Road. About a few days ago, uh, I think it was Saturday and Sunday, the past Saturday and Sunday, it was about 95 degrees and absolutely humid absolutely humid. I'm very, very lucky that none of my kids ended up getting sick or passing out. So luckily no uh, no injuries, no kids were lightheaded. I just made sure that all the kids had plenty of water and plenty of breaks to, you know, sit under the shade instead of baking in the sun like a dried piece of grapefruit basically turning into a raisin and resting in the shade and out of this harmful rays of the sun. This is a nice little area. I was thinking about buying a house here. It's just unfortunately it's Milwaukee County, so taxes are just a little bit too high. Fox Point is nested just north of Whitefish Bay and just south of uh, Bayside. Um, I think it's about... I think it stretches about five miles north to south and only about five miles east to west so it's a very small neighborhood very nice area a lot of good tennis courts around this area even though it's a small neighborhood and uh, everybody here is very friendly pretty nice cars rolling around continue on north Port washington road for one mile there's a really nice fairly inclusive but they're actually not snobby surprisingly a fairly inclusive but very well to do uh, junior tennis program is this small club called Town Club, I believe on Santa Monica Boulevard. And luckily for me, I have a few family friends that are members there. So yeah, unfortunately, I have to wear all white whenever I'm there because that's their uniform, which I have every now and then, as you can see by this outfit <laughs> I'm wearing today. Honestly, I'm wearing white just because it's somewhat warm outside. But um, they have, I think, like 12 or 13 uh, outdoor clay courts and four outdoor hard courts. So it's been nice being able to go hit there maybe once a week. They also have a pretty nice pool and a nice restaurant and a small little bar area outside that I frequent every now and then. Damn, don't I? Man, I'm trying to wear hats nowadays and also... In a quarter mile, turn right onto Good Hope Road. I definitely have been wearing SPF 70 every single time I'm outside playing or teaching tennis, which is 
really good safety habits for uh, being outdoors a lot. Um, I used to not do, but I guess I already got skin damage that luckily didn't turn into anything Take the malignant. Next right onto Good Hope Road. So I've been pretty fortunate um, that, you know, I have a few sunspots here and there, but it's never been anything drastic like, oh, this might be, you know, a malignant uh, spot on my skin that might turn to cancer. So I've been pretty fortunate with that, knock on wood. We'll see how that goes. So my very first question in my YouTube membership for this vlog, and you know, I try to answer as many questions as possible, uh, Andre Taggart is asking, when it comes to the split stepping on a return serve, what's the best method in your opinion? Split stepping in place, taking a small step, or small bunny hop right before the split step, uh, before split stepping in place. I personally, um, I, I personally, given my game style and where I am with my return of service game tag, what I like to do is take one small step with either my left or right foot, right when the toss goes up, and right before my opponent hits the ball, I split step into the court. So very rarely will you ever see me split step and I'm not moving forward. The only time I would ever do that is if I'm coming across an absolute monster of a server where I need, I really need to take time, especially on a first flat serve of his, to get reaction time to get the point started. But typically I take a small step into the court and then I split step right before they make contact with the ball. So I think uh, a professional that does that on service returns is, I believe, Andy Murray. I don't do like the bunny hops that Rafael Nadal does or Marin Cilic does, but I'm definitely more of like an Andy Murray type of footwork preparation split step guy when it comes to return of service. So tag, that's a good question. Thank you very much, man. And I'm not gonna cut down through Milwaukee because I know it's rush hour. It's right around 5.46 right now and we're still about 20 minutes away. Brian Mark is asking, if I feel like I'm getting pushed around by stronger players that weren't stronger a year ago, do I need to get back to a heavier racket or am I just getting old and weak after my heart attack? Well, Brian Mark, first of all, I'm glad that you're recovering and I'm glad you're still able to play tennis given your current medical condition. Hopefully you're taking precautions so that it doesn't happen again because I know that could be a very scary aspect, a very scary event, traumatic event in your life if that has ever happened to you or anyone that you know you're very close to. So the heavier racket could be an option. It could very well be that the people that you're regularly hitting with got stronger. That's very possible. But in my opinion, other than your opponents actually getting stronger or getting a heavier racket, a lot of it is fitness. And by fitness, I mean specifically the strength of your legs. I feel like if you have stronger legs, you are not going to be nearly pushed as far back against heavier hitting opponents from the baseline. So if I were you, obviously stay healthy, get in shape, and work on work on your leg strength. So Vince Wynn is asking, on a scale of 1 to 10, how cute is Vincey? God damn it, Vince. 6.9 out of 10, just because it is uh, the date of 6.9. So there's your answer for you. This is like one of the only times when driving that I want to hit a red light so I can answer the questions. <laughs> oh, because I'm not about to read and drive. Because, <laughs> you know, this is all on tape. Because I would never do anything illegal ever, right? So what's really nice about um, this specific state league, other than, you know, playing competitive tennis on a regular basis is that because this specific league falls on Wednesday nights, it's something to really look forward to as a 31 year old person with a career, you know, a desk job, career, software development. It's, you know, on Monday and Tuesday, it's something to look forward to. And then Thursday and Friday, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, the win or the losses or how close of some matches are with my teammates. But also, you know, after tennis, something after work something people really didn't say to me when I was a teenager or you know a significantly younger individual walking around this earth is that how fast life can really be because you're doing 40 hours a week at your desk job you're hopefully sleeping 40 hours a week 
So the other 40 hours of the week, that's really all you have left. And you know, I, I have a lot of hobbies. Vince Wynn is also asking, how did Mark Sansek get such nice calves? Part of his genetics, part of it is uh, tennis, part of it is uh, lifting for tennis. And on a scale of one to 10, how badly would Vince Wynn beat me in a match? I'll skip over that. Karen is asking, which Discord moderator is likely to want to speak to your supervisor? I think we all know the answer to that one. And Brian Mark is asking, what is my go-to order at Taco Bell? So for Taco Bell, man, this could be a vlog season on its own. So depending on how much I had to drink, I'll order either A, order A, which is one or two steak chalupa supremes, no tomato, one crunchwrap supreme, and then one steak quesadilla. I'll sometimes mix up uh, the steak with the chicken on any of the entrees. Um, but if I'm really buzzed or if I'm really hungry or I really had a decent amount of vodka or whiskey or IPAs pumping through my system, I'll probably order like that same mix, but I'll probably order two or three times the quantity of what I just previously stated because I am very much a hungry boy after a few drinks. Alex Sweet is asking, why does Berrettini skip leg day? Dude, I ask the exact same thing. So Berrettini is uh, the Italian up and comer, 6'5 uh, six, or 6'6. Six, six. So he doesn't have like a bulky upper body like Joe Wilfred Sanga or Rafael Nadal. But if you really take a look at him, just like standing and not moving, he has really broad shoulders. And he hits both sides of his ground strokes fairly flat. But his forehand and his serve are absolutely monstrous. But you are absolutely right. He's got some of the skinniest legs I've ever seen on tour on the male side. Soy78 is asking, when is the thick calf cam coming? And that is in reference to a live stream I did on 6-8 uh, on Tuesday, which was yesterday, because today is 6-9. Nice. And towards the end, I was kind of joking around about having a separate uh, DSLR camera or high quality webcam just angled literally at my calf the entire live stream because, I mean, unless you guys really want me to be a, uh, a hot tub Twitch streamer or YouTube streamer, which definitely won't happen. <laughs> um, I do like, in all seriousness though, for that, for that, uh, for the serious part of that question, I do want to purchase um, another high quality webcam or DSLR camera to have a different angle for my live streams to make it more entertaining for you guys as viewers because like I'm, I'm at that weird state of my YouTube I guess career and progress of I don't know if I am a YouTube content creator or a YouTube you know, a YouTube video maker that has a good following on just live streams just because of the nature of the way I do things, or I'm a YouTube streamer that has a lot of content being pumped out on a very regular basis and a lot of people like to do. So I still don't know whether or not, you know, I'm a YouTube videoer that is really good at streaming or a YouTube streamer that is good at making, you know, original videos. I, I'm still kind of debating that on my head. And to be honest, I'm perfectly fine not having like a, an answer to that question. So yeah, it's, it's a good problem to have. It's a good question to pose for yourself for introspection. Definitely nothing wrong with that. Man. I honestly think any motorcyclist on the road, whether it's a street or highway, whether you're riding a crotch rocket, a Harley, or anything in between, if you're a motorcyclist and you're not wearing a helmet, that's either signaling A, you really don't prioritize your mental health or well-being, physical mental health and well-being, very highly in your totem pole of priorities, or you have a death wish. Because there's a lot of there's a thing that I want you guys to know about me is that I used to have a crotch rocket when I was 22, and I got into an accident. And luckily, you know, I, I was able to walk away and I was wearing a helmet. 
But when I took off my helmet after the accident, after I kind of recovered myself because I was seeing stars, if you guys have ever been into any type of a vehicle accident, um, I took off my helmet, there was a huge gash on the back of my head, where my head would have been if it's not for the helmet. So I personally think that, would I have died? Probably not. I don't think I would have died if I didn't have a helmet, but I definitely would have been in much more serious injury at the time if I wasn't wearing proper head protection. So, yeah, I, uh, if I were to buy a motorcycle again, which I definitely do, because if you guys have ever been on a motorcycle, whether you're a passenger or the operator of the motorcycle, being on a motorcycle is much more exhilarating and like adrenaline pumping than being in any regular fast consumer car in the market today. There's just something like arousing and erotic, not in a sexual way, but there's something definitely arousing and erotic about being on a motorcycle, especially on the highway when there's no one else with you. And you're just feeling the wind just bumping your chest because literally it's just you, the motorcycle and the road. There's no seat, there's no, there's no rough, there's no doors. It's an amazing feeling. I miss it. I'm guessing that's why people do crazy stuff like, you know, paragliding um, until they go splat on the side of the Grand Canyon going 120 miles an hour. Oof, talk about adrenaline. All right, now back in my hometown of Wauwatosa. We're gonna cut slightly corner of Wauwatosa to get into Brookfield, eventually into the home court of Brookfield East High School. Home of the Spartans, I believe, is their mascot. I believe the individual I'll be playing today is, I think he's either 19 or 20. I think he just got done with his freshman year at a small private college called Carthage College in, I believe it's Racine, Wisconsin. I get Racine and Kenosha mixed up quite a bit. but. He plays either four, five, no, sorry. He either plays three singles, four singles, or five singles for Carthage College, which is um, a Division three university. So he's a decade younger than me. If this is the individual I'm gonna be playing, it's gonna be another tough one. And hopefully I've been dieting enough with my slightly cutting down on alcohol and fast foods at midnight every single weekday to be able to uh, pull it out for my team. I've been hitting with Brian quite a bit the past few days and uh, high intensity hitting. So pretty have, have some pretty high expectations of myself, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. And hoping my team can pull out another 5-0. All right, just arrived at Brookfield. About half a mile away. Oh, that guy's cutting really close to me. That driver should really stay their lane. I don't know if you guys saw that, but that two inches away from me what the hell so if you guys haven't already hit like and consider hitting subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of when original tennis content like this vlog will be uploaded on YouTube it really helps this channel and it really helps original content creators like myself be a little bit more exposed to people that want to know a little bit more about the tennis life from an from an amateur perspective and also, if you guys can spare $2.99 per month, consider hitting my YouTube membership by joining my YouTube membership channel. It really goes to support this channel and you get exclusive perks like your questions being answered in this type of style on at least a weekly basis. And you guys can have custom emojis that I personally make for you guys to use on my YouTube comment section. For all my videos and my YouTube live streams that I do Tuesdays and Thursdays and Sundays. So I'll see you guys there. I know this is a deep and dark thought and I swear to you I would never do this but what would happen like because there's bikers everywhere and biking is good right but there's like a deep 
dark part of me that kind of like just kind of wants to roll them over like a bowling th I would never do it. I would never do it. But what if? I know I'll get arrested and just be in jail, you know, the death penalty, all that stuff. But you could and see what happens, but I won't. But I won't. But But I won't. All right, we are here at Brookfield East High School, which is my state league's home court for the 2021 season. So, as I'm straightening out my car because I'm an Asian driver, I will see you guys in a few moments about the result of not only me, but my team. As always, Oh, I gotta stay away, but you won't let me. No one makes me feel like you do. When no one sets my body on fire, and no one gives me shivers like you. Oh, no one does it better. Unfortunately, the individual that I thought I was going to play ended up playing three doubles. So I ended up facing someone completely different, still a very good player, but the expectation of me preparing for someone that was possibly a decade younger than me is very different than playing someone that is a decade older than me. Again, the individual I played is a fantastic player. He didn't play college tennis though, so it was a different type of game style that I'm accustomed to, but luckily for me, I was able to pull it out 6-2-6-1 uh, six, six, and uh, there are some things I want to take away from it. For example, I got broken three times. The three games that I lost were all on my serve. So that's something I'm going to be working on later this week to prepare for my next coming match because we don't have a bye this coming week. Our number two singles player, Joey, ended up playing a buddy of mine from the Racine area who I also met at Nationals if you guys followed that season one of my vlog and joey ended up playing very well beating my buddy robert 6260 uh, scott ended up playing with a new member of the team tim who is a tennis director at one of the clubs just west of milwaukee scott and tim at the number one double spot beat arvind and jason 6364 andy my team captain played with Lee, who unfortunately hasn't been playing too much tennis given the recent global worldwide situation, but they were able to pull it off at two doubles, beating Patrick and J6475. And then two recent additions to my team for doubles, Jeff and Blake ended up beating the individual who I thought I was going to play, Cooper, and his partner, Charles. Jeff and Blake on my team got the win at three doubles against Cooper and Charles, 6-2, six, 6-2. Two, six, two. So the way that everything is standing right now, my team is well ahead of the curve in terms of matches and total courts won so far by quite a bit, but we just can't get comfortable and kind of be lackadaisical and um, not putting a little bit pressure on ourselves to make it out of the greater Milwaukee area to get the state. So as of now, we have... 10 out of 10 courts. We've won every single one of our matches with only dropping one set. So we'll keep in touch 
And if you guys have any questions, please leave a comment down section below. And as always, happy hitting.